The three major types of monosaccharides that we ingest into our body that are part of the human diet are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Now, when we ingest glucose, and glucose makes its way into the cytoplasm of our cells, our cells begin the glycolytic pathway. And this breaks down that glucose into ATP molecules and pyruvate molecules and other molecules. But what happens when fructose or galactose actually make their way into the cytoplasm of our cells? So fructose we typically obtain from plants, and galactose we typically obtain from milk or dairy products. Now, it turns out that unlike glucose, which actually has its own catabolic pathway in our cells, these two sugars do not have their own individual breakdown pathways. And so when these two sugars, monosaccharides, actually make their way into the cells of our body, these sugars must be transformed into molecules, into metabolites that are part of that glycolytic pathway. And once that happens, we can basically incorporate those glycolytic metabolites into the glycolytic pathway. So let's begin by discussing fructose. Now, depending in what type of cell that fructose actually ends up, it can be converted into a glycolytic metabolite in one of two ways. Now, let's begin by discussing the fructose 1-phosphate pathway, and this is the pathway that is found in the liver cells of our body because we find that the majority of these fructose molecules actually end up in these liver cells. Now, fructose 1-phosphate, uh, the, the fructose 1-phosphate pathway actually consists of three individual steps. And ultimately, what we want to do in this pathway is transform a fructose molecule into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glycerol aldehyde 3-phosphate because these are the two molecules that are in fact glycolytic metabolites. And so we can feed them directly into the glycolytic pathway and then we can use those molecules to form ATP molecules. So let's see what these three steps actually are. So in step one of the fructose 1-phosphate pathway, we have an enzyme we call fructokinase. So what is fructokinase? What does it do? Well, kinase means it phosphorylates, and so we have to have an ATP molecule. And fructo means that the substrate molecule to this enzyme is a fructose. So we have our fructose, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of fructose, and fructose kinase, Fructokinase basically uses the ATP to phosphorylate carbon number one and we form fructose 1-phosphate. We also form the ADP as well as the H. Now, what is the purpose of this step number one? Well, the purpose is to basically destabilize this molecule. Once we add that phosphoryl group, that destabilizes our molecule, and now in the next step, we can basically cleave the molecule into, uh, into two, three carbon molecules. So, in the first step, fructose is phosphorylated at carbon 1 by fructokinase that destabilizes our fructose, also traps that fructose in the cell, and now we can basically cleave that fructose by the activity of an enzyme we call fructose 1-phosphate aldolase. Now, what is an aldolase? Well, an aldolase is an enzyme that catalyzes an aldol cleavage. So essentially we have the fructose 1-phosphate that we formed in step 1. This interconverts into its open chain form. So this bond here in black essentially uh, breaks and so we form this open chain form. This purple section is this region here and the light purple is this section here and the orange bond is the bond that is cleaved by this fructose 1-phosphate aldolase and we form two three carbon molecules. One of these is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, DHAP, and this molecule is part of the glycolytic pathway. And so now we take this molecule and we place it into stage two of glycolysis. And in stage two of glycolysis, this molecule is then transformed into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate gap. Now, what about this? Well, this is not actually part of that glycolytic pathway, but it's very close to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The only thing it's missing is a phosphoryl group on carbon number 3. 
And so all we have to do in the third step is use, use a special enzyme and an ATP molecule to basically attach a phosphoryl onto carbon number three. And that's exactly what triose kinase actually does. Now triose simply means this substrate molecule is a three carbon sugar. One, two, three. Triose is a three carbon sugar. And so we have an attachment of the phosphoryl. We take it from the ATP and place it onto carbon number three. And so we form our glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, the gap molecule, which can be fed into stage two, actually stage three, because in stage three, this molecule is eventually converted into pyruvic molecules and ATP molecules. So this is what our fructose one pa uh, phosphate pathway is like. And this is the pathway that is followed by liver cells. So if fructose makes its way into the cells of our liver, this is how it's going to be basically transformed into molecules that can be fed into that glycolytic pathway. Now, in other tissues, in other cells of our body, in non-liver cells, there's a simpler pathway that is followed. So, if we recall stage one of glycolysis, in stage one, we actually form fructose 6-phosphate in step number two. And in step number three of stage one, we basically transform that fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So, the simpler step is to actually take that fructose use an ATP molecule and a special enzyme we call hexokinase, which was also actually used in stage one of glycolysis, and we form fructose 6-phosphate. And fructose 6-phosphate can be fed directly into that glycolytic path went to stage one. And in stage one, step three involves transforming this into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And of course, we form the ADP and the H because we have to use an ATP to actually transfer that phosphoryl group onto carbon number six, this carbon here. So in non-liver cells, other tissue cells of our body, fructose can be converted into fructose 6-phosphate by the action of hexokinase. So these are the two pathways by which the cells of our body can basically incorporate fructose into the glycolytic pathway. Now let's move on to galactose. Unlike fructose, there's only one pathway that is followed by galactose molecules. So once galactose makes its way into the cells of our body, galactose is transformed into glucose 6-phosphate via the galactose fructose interconversion pathway. And this pathway is made up of four steps. And by the way, I have the green asterisk here, here, and here, and that basically symbolizes the fact that these molecules are part of the glycolytic pathway. And once we form these molecules, they can be incorporated directly into that glycolytic pathway to form the pyruvate and ATP molecules. So let's take a look at the four steps of galactose. So this pathway, once again, is known as the galactose fructose interconversion pathway because ultimately our goal is to transform that galactose into glucose 6-phosphate. And glucose 6-phosphate is basically in stage one. So remember, in stage one of glycolysis, we transform glucose into glucose 6-phosphate via the action of hexokinase. So that's where we want to insert this molecule. But let's see how we actually form this molecule in these four steps. So we take our galactose, and by the way, what is the difference between galactose and glucose? Well, galactose and glucose are epimers, and what that means is they only differ in the stereochemistry at a single uh, at a, uh, at a single chiral carbon atom. So which one? Well, this carbon atom number four. In galactose, it points up. In glucose, it points down. So it might seem that the only thing we have to do is basically flip this down, but that's not actually what happens because our cells follow a slightly more complicated pathway. So we have an enzyme known as galactokinase, and what a galactokinase does, well, it's a kinase, so it has to use an ATP, and it, tr and it basically um, uh, transfers a phosphoryl group from that ATP onto carbon number one of galactose, and we form galactose 1-phosphate. So one phosphoryl from the ATP onto this oxygen here to form this galactose 1-phosphate, we form the ADP and the H+. Now, 
what this does is, again, it traps it inside the cell, it destabilizes it. In the next step, step number two, we have an enzyme known as galactose 1-phosphate because this is a substrate that it acts on and it's a, urid uh, it's a urinal transferase. And what a transferase does is it basically transfers some type of group from one molecule onto a different molecule. <coughs> now, aside from having the galactose 1-phosphate, another molecule known as UDP glucose actually comes in. So this is a modified glucose molecule that contains a uridine diphosphate. So essentially attached onto carbon number one of glucose, we have the uridine diphosphate group. And what this transferase enzyme does is, is it transfers a phosphoryl group from the uridine diphosphate glucose onto this phosphate region here. And so we go from galactose 1-phosphate to UDP galactose. So this molecule is known as uridine diphosphate galactose. And notice we transferred the phosphoryl group as well as that uridine. And so this is the molecule that is formed. This is known as UDP galactose. We also form glucose 1-phosphate because that uridine and a single phosphoryl group has been removed from the UDP glucose and so we form the glucose 1-phosphate. So these are the two products of step two. Now this product will go on to carry out step three and this product will go on to carry out step four. Now, step three is important because in step three, what we want to do is we want to reform the UDP glucose. And the way that we reform the UDP glucose is by taking this molecule, the UDP galactose, which looks like this. So in step two, we form this molecule, right? This molecule here, which is the UDP galactose. And now what we do to this molecule is we use a special enzyme that flips this hydroxyl group from the up position to the down position. And if we flip this hydroxyl from the up to the down, what we're going to form is a glucose. And so we go from UDP galactose to UDP glucose, because remember, as I mentioned a moment ago, the only difference between galactose and glucose is the orientation of this hydroxyl group. So the, in, in a galactose, it points up. In glucose, it points downward. So this is in fact an example of a glucose. So we go from UDP galactose to UDP glucose by the activity of UDP galactose for epimerase. And so epimerase or epimerase is basically an enzyme that transforms one epimer into a different epimer. Now, the point of step three was to basically re, uh, regenerate this molecule here. And so now if we sum up all these three steps, because this molecule, UDP glucose, was regenerated here, these will simply cancel out. And so if we sum these up, this is the net equation after three steps. So after three steps of this pathway, galactose plus ATP gives us glucose 1-phosphate plus ADP plus H. Now, what is the final step? Because we still haven't formed the molecule that we wanted to. We wanted to form a glucose 6-phosphate. Well, in the last step, we basically take this glucose... <coughs> we take the glucose 1-phosphate in step 2 and we use an enzyme known as phosphoglucomutase. Remember, a mutase is an enzyme that moves a specific type of group on a molecule to a different location on that same molecule. So all we have to do is move that phosphoryl group from position one to position six. And so in the final step, glucose 1-phosphate is transformed or is um, Glucose 1-phosphate is transformed into glucose 6-phosphate by the action of phosphoglucomutase in which it transfers that phosphoryl group from carbon number 1 to carbon number 6. And this concludes the galactose pathway, also known as galactose-fructose interconversion pathway. And once we form uh, the glucose 6-phosphate, it goes into stage 1 of glycolysis and we can use that molecule to basically form pyruvate molecules and ATP molecules.